it, it, it just it we we lost today, um, but both teams lost today. You know, with the game being on Friday night, you know, and it, obviously it's a, a a TV start time for everybody. So um, our we spent a lot of time as a coaching staff after our game against Oregon State in the office all day Saturday and Saturday night. You know, watching UCLA, we did not play them during the regular season, so it's a new opponent for us. Um, and then really our Sunday was a Monday. Today we just got off the practice field, so today was a Tuesday practice for us in terms of our approach to it. So, you know, we're, we're on schedule with our players. Uh, a little extra work for the coaching staff, but, but we're excited about playing in the game. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Your next question comes from Steve Fidia of Fox Sports. Chip, what challenges does UCLA present you with, with the pistol? You know, obviously it's a different offense, Steve, than we faced um, and from most of our opponents. We did play Nevada earlier in the year, uh, and that's really where the offense started with Coach Alt. Um, so we got a little bit of understanding of it. But every team runs their offense a little bit different, um, you know, and, and, and their personnel may be a little bit different. So uh, it's unlike anything else we've seen in our league, um, but we do have the advantage of playing in that Nevada game. You know, they're the focal point of the offense. You know, they, they, they've switched to it because they wanted to really up their rushing attack, and they've done a good job with it. And, and both Franklin and uh, Coleman are real tough running backs. Um, they do a great job with their scheme. There's a lot of misdirection. There's a lot of uh, moving parts to their offense with, with fly motion and um, extra tight ends and unbalanced sets. And I think we have to make sure that we're disciplined with our keys and stay in our gaps. Yeah, he's done. Darren's done a great job. You know, I think he's only thrown five picks on the season. Two of them went through our receivers' hands. So, you know, in terms of managing the game, he, um, I think he's 13th in the country in pass efficiency. Um, you know, he can throw the ball if we're forced to throw the ball. He was 27 of 40 for 305 and four touchdowns this past Saturday. Um, but in a lot of our games, our attempts are down just because early in the season, some of the teams we played, we were up with a lead at halftime and. Um, you know, we're going to manage a game and, and, and not throw the ball uh, a ton against some of the other opponents that we played. So um, I, I think Darren's really playing very, very well right now. Thanks, Coach. Your next question comes from Gary Klein, LA Times. Hi, Chip. Um, can you um, just give me some insight into, you know, what Kenyon uh, Barner has meant to your program and mm -hmm. kind of how you, how you use him and how you manage – uh, a guy like that who's who's maybe not you know the star player like Michael James and not the new kid on the block like the Anthony Thomas but someone who kind of just keeps doing well yeah Kenyon's a unbelievable weapon for us and you, you see him all over the field um, he, he's a selfless kid that you know he, he's one of the best gunners in the conference on our punt team and does a great job in that, you know, and he'll play any position we ask him to. You know, he plays receiver for us. He plays running back for us. Um, we alternate him and LaMichael, you know, really just based on the number of reps. Our, our running back coach runs that and just, you know, how we're going to sub. And, um, you know, I don't blink as the play caller and say, oh, Kenyon's in and not LaMichael's in, and we're going to call it this way. Is He can do everything. And we're, we're fortunate because of the depth we have from him. But, you know, he's one of the real leaders of this team. He's he's totally selfless. It's all about the team with Kenyon, and, and he's been an unbelievable asset for us, and we're, we're excited that we have him. Thanks very much. Your next question comes from Amy Peterson, the Associated Press. Hi, Coach. Um, in addition to Barner, I know that um, a lot of the attention goes to LaMichael and DeAnthony, but who would you say are kind of the unsung heroes of your offense? I don't know. I mean, I think everybody contributes, and we don't really single one person out because for us to run the ball, it takes 11 people. Um, we've got a bunch of receivers that are uh, doing an unbelievable job in, in, in perimeter blocking for us. Obviously, the offensive line doesn't get enough credit for um, opening up those holes so that Kenyon and the Michael and DeAnthony can run through them. Darren being able to carry out his fakes. David Paulson at tight end. You know, and, and the great thing about this team um, is it's all about the team, and it's all about we, not all about me. And there's not one player on our team that cares about the individual accolades. It's all about where we are as a group, and, and that's what makes us a special group. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Your next question comes from Michael Lewis for Salt Lake Tribune. Hello, Chip. Uh, I'm wondering, with the way, considering the way the season has kind of played out, is it disappointing not to get a chance to go at USC again? 
Tyler no, we have no control over who we play, so we don't worry about things that are out of our control. We're just excited that we get to represent the North and play in this game. Do you have any reaction to the news today that Rick Neuheisel has been fired? Yeah, sad. I like Rick. I think Rick's a good football coach. Um, you know, what happened with Mike, and I like Mike a lot. And You know, it, it's it's uh, part of the game that we understand getting into it. But um, I think there's also assistant coaches on that staff and a lot of other people that, you know, sometimes people forget about them too. But it's one of the tough deals about being a college football coach, and it's kind of the reality that, that we all face. But um, I, I think Rick's, Rick's a good person and Rick's a good football coach. Yes, I, I know that you have the philosophy of the nameless, faceless opponent, but you, you guys are going to hear all week about how you know, this, is just, this should be a cakewalk for them. Is there any need to, to emphasize to them that it, it, it's possible that UCLA is going to come up like a wounded animal and, and, and be particularly hungry? No, we, we respect every opponent that we play, Ted. And, you know, I know with this team, and I get a feel for them early in the week, and we started, uh, we had lifting at 10.15 on uh, yesterday morning, um, and I think every kid was in this building by 8.30. You know, so that kind of gives you their mindset about playing in this game. We had a great practice yesterday, and we had another great practice today, so. Great, thanks a lot. Thanks, Ted. Next question comes from Patrick Finley, Arizona Daily Star. I don't know. I haven't played in one yet, you know, and, I, and I've been asked the question about this setup, and until we get a chance to go all the way through it, then I can kind of give you my feedback on whether it, you know, I think it benefits you it, or doesn't benefit you. You know, I, I'm just, and I said since day one, um, till I can comment on it totally, you know, the only thing we really want to make sure is that we're in it. Um, we got that far, but now we got, you know, a couple more days left of preparation here and then get ready to play the game on Friday. And then, um, but I will tell you this, if we win the game, I'm going to say it's a beneficial thing. And if we lose the game, I'll say it's not a real good idea to have it. Again, to ask a question, press star one. We have a question from Bud Withers, Seattle Times. Chip, just a follow up on uh, Saturday's game. How did you feel overall you guys played? Obviously, the, the score looked pretty good from, from here, but the, just, just a general thought on the overall performance. I thought our defense played really well, Bud, especially early. Um, we had one mix up in a in a coverage and allowed them, you know, they, they ran a nice route combination and, and freed up their running back for a touchdown. But besides that, you know, caused two turnovers early, a um, couple three and outs in there. Uh, took the offense a couple series to get rolling. But after we got rolling, you know, it's, you know, it's interesting with this group. Sometimes you're, you're really not sure, you know, did you play well or not play well? Then you go watch the tape. We had 102 plays and 670 yards offense and 38 first downs. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the tape saying we could have done this better and could have done that better. And, and I think our players are the same way. But, you know, to, for what was on the line, you know, and, and after coming back after the USC game, I was really proud of them. And to me, it was about their effort. And I thought they played with great effort. Thank you. We've got time for one more question. Your last question comes from Whitney Blank, FoxSportsScout.com. Yeah, we've got a chance to watch it. I think our defense watches it more, you know, in terms of watching UCLA on offense. For us, with that, with USC and U and Oregon's offense being a little not not similar, um, there's not a lot we gain from that, you know. So we we watch it from a schematic standpoint, and um, you know, this group that I coach right now and that I'm a part of is they love practicing football, they love playing football, and it, it is really, you know, it's not coach talk. We talk about faceless opponents, and it's an opportunity to play again. Um, we're at home in front of our home crowd, uh, and, and I know our guys will be ready to play. Then they take everybody that we play um, very, very seriously. And we know that UCLA is going to come in here and uh, bring their A game, and we're excited about the challenge.